day welcome to pay it forward well we're all so busy at the moment I thought that I would do a quick little demonstration video for you today I'm going to show you up close and personal some of my top shelf uh, work and you can have a look at those little designs and uh, I get asked so many questions about them I, I thought you, I'd give you a up close look um, also I'm going to be teaching you a very simple little flat wool felting technique and you can use those uh, this technique within uh, my patterns and I'll be showing you how to do that and I'll definitely be introducing free patterns to you where we can accommodate this technique so I hope you enjoy it so let me begin today by talking about uh, our actual wool felting needles now uh, those of you who have been following me for a while you will know that I use my wool felting needle for packing polyester filling so primarily these days that's what I use it for so I've got the the largest grade and it helps me pack the little fibers so what wool felting needles do their function is they are a little needle with tiny little barbs on the end and what they do is as you punch them into your fiber they push the fibers all in together to connect with your receiving piece of fiber or felt and as you pull that needle out they don't pull the fibers out so they only push the fibers in so that's what allows us to pack and you get a nice packed flat surface so so currently that's how I use mine in my work in my uh, what I would call my top shelf work I do additional needle felting where I use wool roving now wool roving I don't actually have any to show you which is shameful but I haven't used it in such a while um, wool roving is simply wool that is process started uh, the the uh, the spinning process and it is you end up with a, a natural product of a, of a soft mass of fiber like this sometimes it's it's more like um, polyester filling sometimes it is in strands but they're thick you can pull them out and you can separate them so it's very like this of course it's dyed all sorts of fabulous colors and uh, and we can apply that to our work so needle felting as in felting separate singular animals and so on um, that's a whole other ball game what I'm going to show you today is a simple process of using your wool felting needle to felt the flat felt that you're already using now a lot of people don't realize that you can do this with your flat felt uh, it's a very very useful little technique and it's very simple and I'd like to show it to you because I would like to bring it to you in some of the upcoming patterns now a lot I know that a lot of you have taken on board my advice to pick up some of these felting needles and so you already have them you've already got them you're already working with your felt so this is just another little skill that's going to help you just take your work up to another level which is great so without all that cost so wool felting needles come in sizes from about 36 to about 42 the higher the number the finer the needle you can see that that little one there it's a tiny little one and that is for very tight little detailing I'll show you that today where we really want to get a nice fine edge they're really really useful so that one's about a 40 to a 42 and my largest one is around about a 36 which I use for heavy work and packing so you can get them online and they usually come in sets of quite a few like this um, and they're very inexpensive and they do last for absolute ages so how do I use it let me show you first of all it's an opportunity for me to show you some examples of how I use needle felting in my work and how I use flat needle felting in my work also and you can see some of the different techniques that I use um, so let's check that out so let's start with my uh, my big old boxer head bust here and you can see he's uh, very uh, menacing isn't he right there in front of you um, so you can see here now what I tend to do with my work is I do I do needle felt little tiny animals and so on and and put them generally with a, a larger 
animal to hold as a toy or so on. But how I use needle felting the most is by adding on to my already sewn base. So most of my designs, my top shelf designs, they're fully sewn, they're fully stitched. You can see there that he's put together just the way that we do, the little patterns that I do with you. And um, obviously different design. And then I take my wool roving and I can build up around to, to create shape and dimension and so on. So you can see that wool roving has just been put in there by my pummeling away there with my little wool felting needle. So I have been able to create those little wrinkles and furrows. All of these sections are done by pattern sewing and design. Same with the ears, but I'm able to build up around those ears with my wool roving felting. So that's an example of using the wool roving and that tends to be how I use uh, wool felting to accentuate my work. And you can see it's just, it's such a fabulous um, effect. So this little one was created fully in white. So that white felt that you see, this entire boxer head was white and I did all of the work and all of the felting, all of the features. Obviously I sculpt in the nose and, um, and then I airbrush the whole animal um, with fabric inks through my air gun. So that's just the way that I go about it. I thought you might be interested to see how I do that. So that's one way that I use my needle felting. So that's an accessory. It's, it's a little add on, it's an embellishment and that's using the wool roving. So then we take it to another level where we have, I've got my little chimpanzee baby here and he has the same sewn head the same sewn little ears and everything else is sewn and then I have gone ahead with my wool roving and I have added his face section. So this section of this little monkey, little sorry, this little chimpanzee is fully needle felted. So you can see the definition that you can get in there and uh, that's all been packed in there. It's very, very secure to the head there. You can see it's not going to move. And then I've been able to add more wool roving. This is probably a good opportunity for you to see. This is wool roving here, coming out of his little fuzzy ears there. You can see that there. Um, and I've been able to felt that in and create some hair there. So, and then I've gone ahead again and I've airbrushed that little face. So another example of that one with a fully um, applied roving face applied to a sewn head. Um, is my little pug. Now you can felt into any fabric that is a fairly open weave. So it doesn't have to be felting felt into felt. You can felt any of your felts into something. You wouldn't felt into a, the quilting cottons that we use because the weave is too tight. Um, something with a bit more of an open weave. Some of your lovely wools and wool blends and linens will take felting very well. So you're not limited to just felt. So let me show you a little quick little pic of um, a little pug that I created and he has a fully needle felted frog friend uh, like I was talking about, but his whole face is needle felted and I've needle felted that face onto a constructed alpaca mohair head so I'm gonna show you that one here. So you can see with that little pug just how far you can take that needle felting and how it can give you those those beautiful realistic results which I like to see in my work. So next I've got for you we're, we're moving into the area I've got a little brown goat here He's a work in process and he has no pants. He's waiting for pants. I need to get on with that. Uh, I never have time. Um, but he has very, very simple needle, needle felting and he's demonstrating today the technique that I'm talking about. So the work that I've done with this little guy around his eyes here, that is flat felting. So that is a flat piece of felt 
cut to the shape that we want and that is then needle felted over that eye section which gives us a more realistic eye. So it's the simplest way to just upgrade that look. You can see both sides. Again, that little goat has been made all in one colour and then I've gone ahead and fully airbrushed him totally. You can see he has uh, resin horns that I have hand sculpted, nose, internal sculpting and uh, sculpting in those ears as well. So they're quite involved, even though they look, uh, they look very simple because they're in felts, there's a lot involved with those. So lots of times I know that a lot of you have said to me, can we have the goat? Can we make the goat? Can we make the, you know, the, the dogs up the top? There's a lot more to them than perhaps you think, but I'm going to slowly start to introduce you into some of these techniques so we can up those patterns just a little. So that's this little guy. Now similar to him, I'll just grab another little candidate for you all. Who have we got here? We have got our little, our little Airedale. So you can see here, well our big Airedale, you can see here I've used that same flat felting technique on his little eye. Wool roving on the top, but this little eye section here is just a little flat piece of felt that we have just direct felted onto him. So it gives him again just that little elevated look, a little bit more realism. So next let's have a look at uh, a little style. So same little technique and we have my little meerkat. So my little meerkat again same little technique with that little eyelid. Very very simply done gives us a great little result, just elevates that realism, just that little bit more. And again, we've brought in little Gruff and he has his same little simple eye surround, again, flat felting that I'm gonna show you today. And I've done just the white on the white. So just with a bit of airbrushing around it and you can see that that result still just adds so much to that very what would be otherwise a very very plain little head. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing those. Now let's get busy and I'm going to show you how to actually needle felt one of these little eyelids. So our little project today that we're going to be working on, this is the little finished little bunny. You can see there, very very sweet realistic style little bunny. So when I put this one together it's a very very simple pattern absolutely easy design. However, because of the shape of the bunny and everything being quite realistic, I wanted to just step those eyes up just a notch so that they are more in keeping with the rest of the design. So in a, in a way to enable us to do that is to be able to go for that flat felt um, little technique that I'm gonna show you now. So I've created the second bunny head. So this little bunny here has those little eye surrounds, nicely needle felted into place. And you can see what that looks like. This is the same bunny, just with the eyes set in. So it's a very sweet look, for sure, but it's very storybook. So it's, you know, it doesn't have that realistic feel to it that I was after to match the body. So, I'm going to show you the simplest way to do that. So first of all, we have our little piece of eyelid cut out section. I have actually got heat and bond on the back of my felt there. I do that just because I want to keep those edges nice and crisp around the eye. So you can see there, I've been able to go for the nice cream color, which is going to outline that eye. Like we see a lot of wild bunnies have that lighter area around their eye. And you can see already just by placing that over that it's already changed the whole look of the little animal. So it is as simple as popping that little one over, taking our felting needle, and we start with a medium. And we're just going to want to get that one into place. So we're tacking it in place. So we're felting into felt 
and polyester filling. Take my little fine one and I'm just going to start tapping away at that. And remember what I said about those needles, only take the fibres in, not back out again. So you won't be pulling anything back out. You don't have to worry about pulling out any of that polyester filling. You can focus on just one little area if you like and get that all secure. So initially I like to just get all those little edges. Do mind your fingers. So we just keep tucking and tucking all of those little edges in. You can see I've gone all the way around there and I've got all my edges nicely secure. Now for this, all of this work on this eye now, I'm using my finest, my finest needle. So my edges are secure. It's part of my little project now and we don't have any fears of that coming off. In the very beginning stages, if you pop it in the wrong place and you've done a few of those initial stabs that you saw me do, you can definitely remove it and, and replace it. So now I'm just going to go in with my fine needle and I'm just going to start to define that little eyelid line just to tuck in, give that top curve a little bit of definition. And you just keep your little needle going in a little straight line and you can see I'm creating that little eyelid there that we're really going to emphasise too. Um, with a little bit of shading if you like so and if it seems to be taking a long time well now you can appreciate the work that goes into fully needle felted projects um, I find it quite therapeutic and I know a lot of people do um, but it does take hours and hours for, so something like my little pug that I did with the little frog that little face uh, you know it does take a lot of time and a lot of precise work so but something like this is really quite simple you can see that's come along quite quickly and it's nicely adhered and that's because we're using flat felting we get to already cut out our shape so we already have our shape all we're really doing is just applying it to our project so we've got that little one coming along just nicely there you can see that little line coming in there and I will do the same along the bottom there as well. Now another way, another simple way, so how can you use it in your work? Well let me show you. Of course you can use it in that way and then we can also add, if I find my little pieces, so something as simple as my little bear, so you've all seen my little, my little traditional felt bear, a really simple way to use this technique is to add eyelids. So we can cut a simple piece of felt I haven't put any of my heat and bond on the back of that one and you can see I can just place that little eyelid over and we create a little sleepy eye. Again it's as simple as holding that little one into position and start our first little securing taps. I'm not going to do this one fully because I don't want that one on there permanently. But you can see, I hope you can see that. It's just as simple as that. That adhesion is really, really good. So it doesn't stop there because you may want to add a little patch to your little bear. A simple little patch on the top of his head. And you can go ahead and do exactly the same thing and you can just apply that little patch and it becomes part of your little project could we sew them on yes we could but in felting it's quite wonderful to turn it into an absolute sculpture now you could add little flowers and you can build up so with your flat felting you could add one piece and then get that all felted on and add a second little patch and then you can always add stitches and beads and that sort of thing afterwards. But you can imagine, it just allows you, you could put a little red heart on their, on their chest um, in this very simple way. So if you have the time, 
it really is a great little really a great little project so I'm just going to tap away at that little eye here just to tuck that all in and I'll show you a little quick and easy shading technique so now I have that little eye just how I want it it's all nice and secure and now I can add a little bit of shading and that is as simple as I'm using a pastel pencil here it's a soft pencil and it is just your usual artist pastels compounded into pencil form which means you can sharpen it and you can get a nice little sharp edge there and it's very very soft so you can apply it but it is a permanent medium so it works very well now this technique that we're doing in any kind of needle felting it's not intended for toys it's not intended for play by any means um, even though it is a permanent little technique not something for a child's toy so we're just going to add a little bit of color there these come in so many different colors so I'm just going to outline that little eyelid and in that center section there and around the bottom of the eye just to mark that out and that little back section there very very simple you don't need to be afraid of pastels because they're so soft and they don't drop a lot of colour in a big hurry so you can really take your time so you can see how these little techniques elevate your work so much and if you're prepared to take the time I hope I've made it look simple because it, it really is it really is quite a simple little technique so you can see how that little eye is coming up nicely you can go as dark or as light as you like and also you may just want to felt an eyelid like this onto your little teddy bear or your little animal and it's the same colour but what you're after is just that little tucked in effect around the eye and that works just as well so you don't always have to use shading another technique is to use your little soft brush with your soft pastel load up your brush and then you can do some really soft work and just tap those in it'll work its way in and it is a permanent color soft pastels love felt They're the perfect marriage so you can see there I've done only just an absolute bare minimum of work on that one there I'll just mark out those edges and the difference between this side of a little bunny's head and the other side is quite remarkable so we've gone from a very realistic looking little bunny to that little very plain storybook so you can see with a little bit of work how incredible that comes up so I hope you have really enjoyed learning about this technique today I hope you'll give it a go if you want to give it a go and you're afraid of doing it on your actual work just make yourself a nice tight little sewn ball of felt filled with your polyester filling and just have a practice just get used to using your little needle just remember it's the same as everything that I always tell you whatever you're doing with shapes and 3d rotate your work as you go keep moving it around and you can keep adjusting needle filtered work for as long as you like you can come come back after three years and have a little stab at them and tidy them up if you feel they need it but I think that little result is absolutely amazing and I hope you're going to just have a little play with it and look forward to some patterns ahead because when it comes to patterns everybody we have only just begun well thank you all for watching today I hope you enjoyed that and picked up a few special little hints and tips on the subject of felt which is of course my favorite subject 
Um, this is my felt. This is the felt that I use. It is a washable acrylic felt. It's two millimeters thick and it comes in so many colors. Now I purchased mine here in Australia from a supplier and I have spoken to her and she is happy to ship overseas. Now I've done that because so many of you have been saying to me I can't get good felt. This is very, very inexpensive. Um, she will ship anywhere in the world. I know you'll have some shipping costs, but the cost of the actual felt is very, very reasonable. So, and no, I don't receive anything for that. I just want you all to have good felt to be making my projects. So check that out in the description box, find that link and uh, you'll be all set. So my next question is, do you want to make the little bunny? The bunny that I've featured today, I can actually make her up as a pattern for you all and a free tutorial. So tell me what you think. Um, she is actually very, very simple to make. As you can see, so many colors you could use there. So talk to me in the comments. I love to hear what you have to say. I appreciate all of your support, everybody. I know everybody is very busy, but please find some time to create and uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, don't want to miss any of those free patterns. Lots more coming to you all. Everybody stay safe and everybody keep paying those good things forward. And until next time, it's Hiru from me.